We're finally finishing up the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. Seems like we've been reading the same passage of Scripture over and over and over again for what, five weeks now, six weeks now? It's been a long time. But this passage this morning is, gives us something that's actually very clear and I think something each and every one of us can absolutely understand. Towards the end of this passage, it says that many of the disciples heard what Jesus was saying and it was too hard for them to understand. It's too hard for us to do. And hard is not really a good word. It's like they, it's something that they didn't understand. It's not a difficult in the way that we think that we take difficult today. It's more of a, I just don't believe it, really. I can't understand it. I can't take it. I can't do it. It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. So here we have this group of disciples who hear this hard saying, and what do they do? They walk away. They turn around and they walk away. And it's not that they were just the crowd, right? We have to make sure we understand that completely. John doesn't say that it was just the crowd heard some of the stuff that Jesus was saying and they decided that they weren't going to follow him and listen anymore. John actually says that these people who turned around and walked away were disciples. These were people who had given up a part of their life, who had given something up to follow after Jesus. And they had followed after Jesus, probably for quite some time. And now Jesus says to them these things that are too hard for them to take. So they just stop following and go back home. Have you ever been there? I won't ask you to raise your hands. Have we ever been in that spot where we've followed Jesus and we've done the things that we think God has asked us to do and we get to the point of, I just don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if this is possible for me to continue down the road that I've gone. And you want to just turn around and walk away. I've been there. I'll admit it. Several times. I can, I can think of right now off the top of my head several times. One of which my wife reminded me of last night as we were sitting at um, Katie and Josh's wedding um, reception. And we were talking about going to seminary. Or maybe it was even before the wedding. I don't remember. Um, it might have even been at the rehearsal. I don't remember. But we talked about it in the past couple days. That about the time that we were going to seminary and how... I was questioning that we, whether or not we were going to go. We lived in North Carolina. We still owned our house. We had a year-old, 16-month-old child and another child on the way. We owned a house. My wife didn't work. We had a baby. We had a baby coming. Now I'm quitting my job and going to have to pay for school when neither one of us are working. And in my mind, I thought, there's absolutely no way this is going to happen. So it's not going to happen, and we're just not going. And my wife, I remember quite, quite, as as if it was yesterday, she looked at me and she said, I'm moving to Gettysburg whether you're coming with me or not. (laughs) And I said, okay, I guess I'm going. So we went. That was a time, though, that I questioned whether or not I was actually going to be able to do what I knew God was calling me to do, though. I knew that for a fact that God wanted me to go to seminary. Now, whether or not it was Gettysburg or not, I don't know, but Gettysburg worked out. So, But God was calling me to go to seminary, and I was questioning that because my focus was on, how are we going to pay for this? How is this going to be possible? How am I going to provide for my family? I was focused on things that weren't what God was needing me to focus on. This passage is about how the disciples came to Jesus and they were following after him because he gave them something that they didn't understand and he was teaching them something that was new to them. And then it finally got to the point where he told them things, this one thing over and over again and they just couldn't take it anymore. So they gave it up and they turned around and they walked away because they were looking at things and trying to understand it in their own their own lives, making it to fit the pattern of what they had planned, making it fit the pattern of what they thought was supposed to happen in their lives. And then there's Peter and the twelve. Because Jesus turns to them after he sees all of these disciples walking away, and he turns around to the twelve and he says, so are you guys going to leave too? (laughs) 
What's the difference between the disciples and the rest, between these twelve and the rest of the disciples? Another point in time when I was in this place where I wanted to, many people asked me why I wasn't turning around and walking away, was the period in time before I came to be with y'all. Right? I resigned my call. I know I've said this before, but I resigned my call at my previous congregation in February of 2012. And I didn't start here until, what, January of 2014. So do the math. That's almost two years I went without having a call. And I had several people ask me over that time period why I was still doing doing this. Why was I still putting myself through this? I had a list, and I actually can show it to you. I still have it, um, of all of the congregations around the country that I talked to trying to find a call. It wasn't that I was just sitting around doing nothing. You can ask my wife. I wasn't. I was actively flying. I got so many frequent flyer miles over those two years. I tell you what, I can have magazines for the rest of my life. <laughs> and during that time, don't, don't get me wrong, I questioned whether or not I was actually doing what God was calling me to do. And several people asked me, how could I be so happy and so upbeat, even through all of the garbage and the crap that we were going through? You know, and it was hard. How do you provide for a family if you don't have a job when you're the one who is working? How do you take care of the needs of those who are in your care, who are supposed to be part of your call, right? I am called to be a pastor, but I'm also called to be a father and a husband and a provider for my family. So therefore, how do you do that in the midst of not having a job and looking for one? There were several times that I wondered why. Why am I going through this? Why is this happening? What kept me going? Well, this over here kept me going, for number one. Which, if you don't know what's over here, that's my family. Um, that and the fact that, kind of like the disciples, the focus was there. You see, I asked a question a little bit ago, is what is the difference between the twelve, Peter and the eleven, and the disciples that turned around and walked away? And it's right there plain in the words that Peter says. Jesus says, are you guys also going to go away? And Peter looks at Jesus and he says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Who who else are we going to go to? You see, it's so easy for us to look at this passage of Scripture and to say that the disciples that left Jesus were slow in faith and didn't have enough faith, that they doubted the whole time that they were there, and that Peter and the other 11 disciples are just monsters of faith and people that we should raise up onto pinnacles and and hold in high revere. But remember, each and every one of our gospel writers says that these 12 were morons. Plain and simple. They didn't get it. A little bit later on in the Gospel of John, Jesus calls Peter Satan. Get behind me, Satan, because you're focused on earthly things, not on what actually has to happen. These twelve were not any better disciples than the ones that left. So why is it that they got it? Why is it that they stuck around? It's because they knew where to look. All these other disciples were so worried about the earthly things, about not being able to understand what Jesus was saying to them in a way that we get it, in a way that fits our plan. And Peter and the eleven, they knew where to look. They were focused on Jesus. Now, not all the time, right? I mean, we can see it in the Gospels. As I said, John, later Jesus calls Peter Satan. So every now and then they they miss it. And it's okay for us to miss it. I missed it when we were moving to Gettysburg. I missed it, I'm sure, a few times in that two years that I was looking for a call then you just have to bring your focus back around. And when you focus on Jesus, when you see Him standing in front of you, and He is the focus for everything that's happening in your life, then it doesn't matter what else is happening around you. And it doesn't matter whether or not what He's asking you to do makes sense, because you know it's going to work out. Because trust me, 
If it had to make sense, I wouldn't have moved from Ohio to Texas, and I wouldn't have moved from Texas to Wisconsin. Because while we love it here, sometimes those decisions just don't make sense. But you know what? It's what God wanted us to do. So in the end, it doesn't matter if we completely understand it. We know that God is going to take care of us and that God is going to be in and, through and work through these relationships and these things that are happening. Because that's where our focus has to be. If we see anything else but Jesus, then we need to turn around and look at what, we're, what we need to be looking at. We need to be cross-eyed. This works for only a few of you. Some people it doesn't work for. But if you look at this, what do you see? There's two eyes. But if you look at it really close, you'll also see something else. There's a cross. You need to be cross-eyed. You need to focus on Jesus. As Hebrews tells us that Jesus, if we can focus on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, then everything is going to work out. Not in our plan, not in our way, but in his way. And that, my friends, is the best way that it ever could work out. So keep your focus on Jesus. And know that what he's asking you to do may not make sense, but it's the best decision that you could ever make.